Welcome to FAQ Friday. The first question is, where'd all your hair go? We had a lot of great questions this week, so I'm just gonna jump right into the first one from Sweet Pea Craft. Nice information, my squash fruit did not even have a chance to open the flowers for pollination, yet they shriveled on the vine. What could have caused that problem? So the main reason that the squash will fall off the plant before it's even had a chance to be pollinated would be most likely uh, warm, damp weather. And that can cause the female reproductive parts in the flower and baby fruit to not develop properly. And the plant knows that and it goes ahead and drops that off because it knows it's not going to, even if a, a pollinator does come, it's not going to work. So. That's the main reason. Uh, lack of water can also do it. It will start to shrivel and the plant will uh, basically try to conserve water by dropping off any unnecessary, it will try to pollinate or try to ripen the fruit that's already on there because it's already started and just put its energy into that thinking that it's gonna die anyway. So let's get our seeds done that we already have started. Uh, the next question is from Carl Bailey. And this was a popular question as well. How many females will a male pollinate? Lots. <laughs> uh, basically, if you're doing what I was showing you with the hand pollination, as long as you see pollen still on there, you've got enough to keep going. So keep going. Margaret D asks, if you only see male flowers, can you pick them or use the little paintbrush and get the pollen and save it until there are female flowers to pollinate. How long is the pollen viable? Um, well, what you can do, it's viable for several days just as is. Uh, if you want to save it, you can actually take the flower and a lot of times you'll see a bunch of pollen in the throat of the flower that's loose and you can just kind of tap it into a paper envelope, maybe a small envelope leave it open for a few days and then it'll be dried out and you can seal it and then you can save it for up to six months after six months uh, the viability of the pollen goes down about 50 percent so you will have to use more but it will still work uh, i've also heard that it can be fr frozen for several years and still be viable but for our purposes what we're talking about here toss it in an envelope and then when the female flowers uh, come in the next couple of days take your paintbrush and paint it on. Wayne Burks asks or says, I don't have trouble with pollination, but my problem is squash bugs, controlling them organically. So yeah, um, there are several ways hand picking them. If they're not a ton, if they're not, you know, widespread, you don't have a huge garden, hand picking all the stages, usually under, under the leaves, you'll find them. Uh, that's one way. You can also place pieces of wood or cardboard on the ground and they'll actually go under there as a kind of a place to spend the night. And then if you go out really early in the morning and turn them over, you're going to find them a lot easier. You can use uh, from the very beginning of the season, you can use floating row covers or fleece covering, which basically just keeps them off of your plants and lets the sun and moisture through. Diatomaceous earth is a good one for any type of hard bodied insect. Diatomaceous earth is an organic control that kind of gets between the little scales of their outer shell and irritates it and gets inside. It, it, it eventually kills them. Um, and then you can also use neem oil every week. Put on neem oil. That's always my go-to first, but uh, all these methods will help control them organically. Amber says, or asks, I watched a video that said you should cut off some of the male flowers on zucchini. You don't need as many and it will produce more female flowers instead. Is that true or not? So first of all, you need to make sure that your plant is actually only producing male flowers and not female flowers. We went through the difference in our last squash video, which this was taken from. So go back and watch that one a few days ago if you wanna see the difference between the male and female. Uh, male flowers, typically it's good to know, for, come on first, most often. 
and there might be several before there's a female. If it's during the growing season, you also need to know that there's usually five to eight male flowers per one female flower. So that's normal. Now, if it's abnormal, if you've got lots more male flowers and maybe no female flowers and you're well into the season, then you have to start looking some, at some environmental causes of that. It is much easier to produce a male flower than a female flower. And so if the plant is under stress, it's gonna take the lazy way out and produce the male flowers. So some things that you might wanna look at is if the temperature's high, which there's not a lot of control about, if there's a lack of water, fertilizer, bad soil, too much shade, take a look at those things first because that's gonna be the causes of stress for the plant that's gonna cause it to make the male flowers rather than the female. So fix those issues if you have them. If all else fa fails, you can start plucking off the male flowers and that will a lot of times stimulate the plant into putting out female flowers. So the short answer is yes, that is true. Um, however, we don't want it to be like taking Advil for some pain in your body and not actually addressing the underlying cause of that pain. So I hope that answers your question. All right, so Lisa Turner, along the same lines, I love and learn so much from your videos. Thank you. How do I handle squash borers? I lost all my squash plants last season. So we are really lucky here not to have squash borers, but I know that's a huge problem the rest of the United States and around the world. And I did a video about two years ago that I will link down below in the video description that's, that goes through several ways to, um, to diagnose and to fix that problem. So uh, rather than go through them all here, I'm gonna make a shameless plug to that video. A lot of people haven't seen it because it was way back when I only had a few hundred subscribers and so a lot of people don't go back that far. Um, but I think it was a good video and uh, I invite you to go look at it if you do have that problem. Renuka asks, you have an absolutely stunning tropical oasis there. So gorgeous, thank you. Um, could you please tell me what kind of banana plant you have there with the reddish leaf? So yeah, that is the Encente ventricosum, more commonly known as the Abyssinian banana. Uh, it is purely, at least in my garden, ornamental. It does not produce fruit in terms of bananas. Uh, in some countries, in some places, the, the root is used as a root edible crop. So, but for me, it's just a beautiful plant and you can grow it uh, in most climates, actually, um, it will need winter protection if you don't have, if you have cold winters, but it's a great plant to have in any garden uh, that just, it's, it, it creates an impact because they're so huge. The, the color is amazing and it just creates a lot of drama and um, it's a focal point of any garden, I think. Seema's comment and question is, wow, what a beautiful plant heaven you have, have there. In such a small space, you have created such diverse landscapes. You do what you can with the space. Um, I love the apple trees. You have so many of them in such a small space. They've been schooled to stay in line. <laughs> yes, they have. How often do you prune them to stay that way? So the, the one major pruning is in January. And I have a video on that from a year or two ago. If you just go up to the type in California Garden TV apple trees. Uh, and that'll show you how to prune in winter. And then throughout the summer, you're gonna see a lot of small branches start to form and they'll come out over the path. And so you just wanna trim those off and you trim them down to finger length and that's gonna create more fruiting spurs. So more spots for fruit to grow in the coming years. Uh, so basically summer pruning is for production, future production. Winter pruning is to maintain the shape of the tree. Think Now's question is, can you add aspirin to your neem oil soap mix or to your tomato and veg fertilizer? Will it do anything detrimental to the non-nightshade plants in your garden? Um, yes and no. You can add it to any of your sprays that you're using as a foliar feed or pest control, and, you can, and it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna help non-nightshade plants, but it's not gonna hurt them either. Kat's question is about scarlet runner beans. Um, I bought some just because the seeds were pretty. They are beautiful. 
how do I eat the beans? How do I know when to harvest? So scarlet runner beans are very versatile and very productive. You can use the beans as green beans when they're young, before they start to get a lot of the little lumps that you see, the, the little beans inside. You can pick them, they're very tender uh, to eat. Uh, and then once they get big, they can get really big. And like you said, the seeds are beautiful and you can dry them and cook them you know, as, as dried beans. So they're a, a good versatile plant to have. I always grow them. They are my favorite bean. Brown Trout Fisherman says, lovely garden, very impressed. Uh, question, because of your pond and water features, do you get mosquitoes? And if you do, how do you control them? I moved from England to Spain a few months ago and mozzies are a problem in my garden. Thank you. Yeah, I would assume, I don't know, maybe warmer climates have more mosquitoes. I guess they do. I would think a lot of wetness in England, you might have them there as well. But bottom line is with a pond, if you have fish in your pond, which I do, they take care of the mosquito problem before it even starts. Uh, they can eat the live mosquito on top of the water trying to lay the eggs. And if they do get any eggs laid or larva hatches, they're going to eat those too. So I've never had any problem. I have two ponds, lots of water, never had any problem with mosquitoes, never even seen mosquito larva in my water. So the next question and last question um, is it actually isn't a question, but it brings up something that I've been wanting to talk about for quite a while. So thank you, JE, for opening up this conversation. He says, or she says, I've always been mostly interested in growing food, not so much ornamentals. But wow, your yard is so inspiring. It, it's both productive and absolutely stunning. I think you have the best suburban garden on YouTube. It's so thoughtfully arranged. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the comment and the compliments. I appreciate that. I really have created a space here for me, and hopefully now lots of other people are enjoying it as well. But uh, it's interesting because my first love, my first gardening uh, and experience was not vegetables. It was ornamentals. Uh, my favorites are tropicals, as you can probably tell, but I actually have uh, non-tropical plants in the front yard that I grow as well. So the reason, the, the, what I wanted to talk about was I actually started this channel. If you go back, my first videos um, were the tropicals. My first big video was actually growing lavender and how to grow lavender and, and hibiscus. Those were my two first ones that kind of took off. And then I just started getting into vegetable gardening on camera. And those are the ones that really propelled this channel forward. So I kind of stuck with that, but I've been wanting to talk with you guys because I know maybe some people, they don't have a lot of space. You don't have a lot of space. And if, if you're going to grow something, it's going to be edibles, but there's got to be a ton of you out there who also grow non edibles. So I really would like to know in the comments down below, how many of you there are there out there? Because I would like to expand this channel in the near future um, to include non edibles as well. Not that I'm going to be going away from vegetables. I will never do that. Uh, but in addition to what I'm doing now, there's so much more content that can be produced to not only let you have a space that is functional and productive, but a space that you enjoy actually just relaxing in. And I can relax in just a vegetable garden. Vegetable gardens can be very beautiful, but there's just something to be said uh, about a English cottage garden or a tropical jungle garden or some kind of theme that you love that you can just be at peace in. And so let me know down below what your interest is in that. In addition, it's not gonna be taking away from, you know, growing vegetables and any of that kind of content, but something that can expand this channel a little further, which I've always wanted to do, but I did kind of pigeonhole the channel into, you know, growing edibles. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. I really love to hear it from as many of you as possible. If you've never commented before, this is a great time to do that. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I would love if you give the video a thumbs up if you learned something. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon. See you Sunday.